and the same thing going abroad and speaking abroad at the same time. And I came to the realization that the medical system is pretty much a so-called reductionist system. Mm. They want to fix things but one nutrient at a time because it sells. And why do they want to sell that? Why, how can they sell it? It's because they get a patent on it. That's the way the business world works. They can't they can't take a, a chemical out of nature and then use it as a drug. They can't do that. They can't make claim because you can't get a patent on it. They can't protect their their uh, their business. So what they do when when they can't take the 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 chemical in nature that somebody might see it looks like it's a good thing and they they want to use it they create a derivative of it and the moment they and they make a derivative that's not natural and at that particular point in time all bets are off that's why all drugs have side effects and so uh anyhow uh it went down wrong sure you were asking me so what you ask me is, I, I, I was asking you doctors that you recommend oh oh yeah <laughs> uh well the ones that i've written i've met a lot who now are kind of getting into the plant-based community a lot uh i i was at a, had a class at cornell and i actually offered a course called vegetarian nutrition i didn't care for the title but university wanted me to do that get students but I, I got some funding to bring in a total of 32 guest speakers over a period of six years to my class. And so I reached out and got a whole bunch of people. Uh, six of them were avowed ve ve vegetarians. And I brought them there. It didn't turn out so well, to be honest about it. And they were all, all, all MDs, the ones in, in this case. One of them came in, got you know, gave a lecture, was excited about it and stuff like that. But then he went back and he organized his study and then put my name on his paper as a lead one. And it was, it was a, the, the stuff in the study really wasn't there at all. He didn't even do it quite like that. And so it created a very unpleasant uh, situation. I, I told him to take it, you know, withdraw it from, from the journal and he wouldn't do it. Another one. So he got into the vitamin stuff, you know, selling vitamins. And then another one uh, was there, uh, had him twice actually, um, you know, he, he got very active and he was making the argument entirely on ethical reasons. You know, and I, I worked closely and I was on his uh, board and everything like that. But uh, uh, that to me, the ethical reason alone, then he, he goes down and takes the, the he, he doesn't, none of them have any training in nutrition, none. So, but he goes, starts making nutritional arguments that are not correct. And it's hard. It's hard to deal with that sort of thing. I mean, saying things like, for example, the cause of heart disease is saturated fat. And therefore, just get rid of saturated fat and it was end of story kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, or, you know, uh, work hard to bring under control the consumption of cholesterol, which is okay for, you know, ethical reasons, I guess, or scientific reasons, but it, it's not the real reason. So that that creates a problem. And then uh, the, of those uh, four, they all went off and did their own thing, not surprisingly. Uh, you know, one of them wanted to group a uh, lot, get a lot of facts together. And this is a fact, all kind of isolated. That's not the way science is. That's not the way nutrition is. And none of them are trained in nutrition, none, because they don't teach nutrition in medical school. So I, I do have uh, some pretty serious problems with the whole medical system, to be honest about it. Uh, and I know there are a lot of good people working hard and trying to do their things. But at the same time, I also have friends in, in the medical community too that are, you know, they they uh, are anxious to learn what they can learn about this area of nutrition. And it's a very different philosophically. That's the issue. They're, they're working on the idea of one thing causing or creating a disease and that's that's their game plan. And uh, it's just, they're, they're, they're told what to say. I, I, uh, I, I can tell you this, and this I don't need to worry about uh, name and names, but uh, we moved to, to a new area about four, three or four years ago. So I had, I wanted, we wanted to have a personal physician. And so I, I got a personal physician, younger guy, nice guy, nice guy. Not, that wasn't the issue. And I had some uh, blood pressure problems that creeping up on me, getting too high. And I, I said, she's, and he told me, of course, to take the blood pressure medicine, the lowest dose of this drug called amlodipine. 
And uh, so I, I took it for six days, not quit. I said, I don't, I don't need that thing. And uh, <laughs> anyhow, when I went back in later, he says, what are you taking? He's, are you taking your blood pressure? I said, no. He said, why not? And I, said, I told him, I said, you know, you guys in medicine, you, you advocate that because of a meta-analysis of 26 studies. 26 studies shows that those blood pressure medicines do not decrease stroke, as you say they do. That's what the, That was the conclusion of that study. Yes, it reduces blood pressure, but doesn't mean it reduces stroke. And so he said, well, really? Well, let's look at the, uh, and he went to the, the their Bible on the internet. He said, let's, let's look at this, because he didn't believe me. He said, let's look at this. So we, we started reading down, you know, the, the justification that all the doctors have, and they all have to, you know, advocate this. And we started reading down, and I said to him, I said, do you see any evidence? We're reading together. I said, do you see any evidence there that claims that it's reducing stroke? He finally said, well, he said, we're told to say that. I said, I know you are. <laughs> well, you're probably I mean, the worst nightmare as far as, you know, yeah, uh, I, disagreement. I mean, when, when I come in there, he doesn't, I don't know, he's kind of cautious. But, but he is a nice guy, I want to say that. So there's a doctor that I want to ask you about um, that is very big in this community that a lot of people reference, even during um, these, uh, you know, these uh, presentations, his name has come up uh, many times, which is Dr. Michael Greger. Are you familiar with his work, Nutrition oh, Facts? Yes, very much so. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on his body of work? And, and then I also want to ask you as part of that question, we have another speaker, John Abramson, who talks about uh, how the pharmaceutical industry has captured the uh, um, American healthcare and specifically the uh, the medical journals and the peer reviewed medical journals. And he points out that this peer review process off most often um, only gives the the um, the study design and the conclusion to the reviewers, not the underlying uh, data points. So what are your thoughts on that? And, and then how that relates to what Michael Greger does, which is to re to review all the peer reviewed medical literature. Well, I know both of them. I know uh, Greger quite a bit better. I had him at Cornell too. To, uh, he did his undergraduate work there actually. Uh, in the early days, uh, actually I'm not happy with his approach uh, because uh, he, he has no, he has not worked in the field and to my knowledge, he's not had any training in nutrition. He's never participated in a profession, you know, of actually doing research. To my knowledge, I've never known of him to publish a, a single paper. I've had no more than 300. So he comes along and sort of pretends that he, you know, he's this nutrition guru or something like that. He, he's not studied it. He hasn't worked in the area, doesn't publish. I mean, those are critical. That's that's step one to even to be in a, in a trade like this. And so, but nonetheless, he, he does uh, rely on a concept that uh, actually is the antithesis of what I talk about. I have to be honest about it. I'm, I'm being public about it. That is to say, he, he collects a lot of individual observations. He calls them nutrition facts. And, 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 and you know, each one has a, a certain dimension or certain effect, if you will. Uh, but none of that, he's never... He, he's not, not worked on any of those kinds of things. He reads it in the literature, sort of finds the things that he wants to find. And, there, and the most serious part of that is that they that sometimes met, made that they're all separate items. They're, they're all separate items. And, uh, you know, you can do this and this. That's a source, that is the source of confusion, you know, in the public at large, in a larger context. You know, public tend to think, this is good, this is not good, you know, have this much. I mean, they get into those kind of details. That's what doctors are trained to do. And and uh, that's the way it exists. And as I say, I've, I was a representative of the AMA at the times, and I, I've certainly been in the medical system a lot, you know, trying to argue or make a presentation that nutrition is a very different concept fundamentally. It's not a lot of individual facts. It just simply isn't. That is a source of enormous confusion. And it will never go away. You can't conquer, you can't make advances by doing that. Uh, one, one thing he does is, uh, is, is good in the sense that, you know, these little videos and stuff like that, 
uh, you know, people like, they like bite-sized information. And they take it, you know, with a great deal of certainty. You know, if they hear someone presenting it. And so it's kind of clever. Uh, that people, you know, like that kind of presentation. And uh, that's, that's a plus. But uh, in terms of just taking out a bunch of, a whole collection of all kinds of stuff that you just read out of the literature. I, my God, I can put that kind of thing to very easily together and make a case and choose my my topics, my my sources, and prove, if you will, that animal food is the best thing that we got going. So then it becomes the choice of the person putting that stuff together to what's, what they say works and what doesn't work. I, I just, in science, we don't do that. 